ranking every arc from Naruto from worst to best. Now, let me start off by saying that I pretty much enjoy every arc to a certain degree as I don't think any of them are full blown bad. I just have to rank them in a certain order, which would mean that there would be one that would be considered the quote unquote worst arc. The earlier I'm ranking these, you'll come to understand as to why I rank them as such, given that they tend to have more flaws than say other arcs in Naruto. By the way, I combined some of the arcs in the show since I couldn't find a concrete way to separate the arcs. So I'm combining the multiple acts in the war arc into one slot, the Chunin exams and the Konoha crush into just the Chunin exams arc, as well as combining the Itachi pursuit mission, Tale of Jiraiya the Gallant, and Fated Battle Between Brothers into one arc called the Master's Prophecy and Vengeance arc. As they were happening around the same time, it would be a bit confusing to separate all of them. Plus, it wouldn't matter to me all that much since I would have ranked them around the same slot anyways. Coming at dead last is going to be the Kazakage Rescue arc. My issue with this arc stems from the later half of it, but let me first talk about the positives. Surprisingly enough, Sakura was a good highlight in this arc as we see that her work with Tsunade is finally paying off, making her an actual asset to Team Kakashi. She really made her mark as a medical ninja specialist after she saved Kankuro from the poison sorcery planted in him. She also made a starlight moment with Lady Chio in her fight against sorcery, with it being an overall entertaining fight. I also like the general growth in Naruto's character, where we see genuine concern over Gara, given that he also has a tail beast inside of him, as well as being pursued by the Akatsuki. And speaking of which, Gara becomes a more likable character, not to say that he wasn't already when he was a villain, to where we are genuinely concerned for his well-being, as well as his role as Kazakage. Aside from that, it pretty much goes all downhill from here. For starters, the inclusion of Itachi and Kisame feel unnecessary, as not only did they just pad time for this arc with their fights, but the fights themselves were pointless, due to them not actually being there to actually fight, as they were just clones of themselves. I know that they had to be clones because the real duel would have killed everyone there, but that further proves my point as to why they shouldn't be in this arc to begin with. Next would be the inclusion of Team Guy, or at least their use in this arc. Going back to the Kisame fight, it was pretty much useless, and the fight against their own clones was just a time waster for the arc as well, as they pretty much did nothing to help the main team out. Then you have the Naruto and Kakashi vs Datara fight, which dragged out and wasn't all too eventful, aside from Kakashi using Kamui for the first time. I can't be mad at this arc, since it expanded the lore of the Akatsuki and gave more credence to what a Jinjuriki is, but aside from that, I'm not giving this arc too much credit. Definitely not a bad arc, but in my opinion, it's the worst. The war arc comes next as one of the worst arcs in Naruto, but this placement is more so based on circumstances. I'm including everything past the 5 Kage Summit arc into the slot, so I'm including Naruto undergoing his 9 tails training, the initial beginning of the war, the 10 tails revival, and Kaguya showing up. The initial beginning of the arc is downright abysmal, with it all just being fights with white Zetsu clones, as well as some fights that narratively sound cool, but amounted to nothing eventful, like the Team Asuma fight and the reunion between Kakashi and Zabuza. The main issue with this part of the story was that it dragged, but was saved by the revival of Madara and its outstanding first showing. The reveal of who was behind the mask was cool too, though I personally saw it a mile away of who was going to be behind the mask, and the fights from this point on is overall exciting to see. My main issue with this arc in general has to deal with a bunch of retcons. First is with Orochimaru coming back to life, as that felt out of place, as well as him just knowing how to revive the previous Okage that were under the Reaper's death seal, and it also bringing Minato back, which in of itself isn't bad, but his upgrades with the Ninetales powers and the random introduction to Sage Mode was out of place. It also doesn't help that since the beginning of the show that Minato was propped up to be the main ninja, the strongest the Leaf has come to know, but is trumped over the first Okage simply so that he could be a suitable rival to Madara. If it was just this stuff, I wouldn't be too upset with this being a thing, but it just adds to the overall negatives I've had with this arc. I don't like the idea of reincarnates in the story, particularly with Naruto and Sasuke, as I feel it cheapens the narrative of it all, as well as the half-baked inclusion of Kaguya. I go into further detail in my video on how the ending of Naruto was trash, so be sure to check that video out, but all in all, this ruined whatever respect I had for the Naruto franchise at this point, as it was fabricated to a certain degree. That being said, there's still a lot to enjoy about this arc, mainly with the fights being shown, such as Kakashi vs Obito, the allied shinobi forces against Obito and Madara, as well as Naruto vs Sasuke at the very end. This arc definitely has some highlights, but not enough to save it from being this low on the list. The Tenchi Bridge arc is rivaling with being the worst arc in the series for mainly with how the initial first half was a bit boring. I don't personally care for the inclusion of Sai if I'm being completely honest, but it's not like I hate him, nor would I remove him from this arc. Him being an emotionless tool was cool in of itself, since it contradicted with Naruto's personality, but there wasn't that big of a payoff aside from Sai just wanting to know more about emotions in general, which isn't bad, but isn't all that present in the remainder of the series. It also didn't help that Yamato was substituted for Kakashi as well. Now, I also don't hate Yamato either, I just don't care for him, and he doesn't stand out aside from being a wood style user, only heard of with the first Okage at this point of the story. But the story does pick up once the team arrives at the Tenchi Bridge and faces off against Orochimaru and Kabuto. Naruto vs Orochimaru is an amazing fight and stands out as one of the best, and going a bit forward, once we see Sasuke near the end of the arc, he stole the show as we get to see what the three years of training resulted for him. He decimated all of Team Kakashi and proved that seeking Orochimaru for power ended up working well for him. All in all, a pretty good arc all things considered, but it doesn't say the fact that it was initially 
really a bore to get through. Just so you know, going forward, I pretty much love the arcs I'm about to mention. Like, they'd be at least in A tier if I had to rank them that way. So it's going to be hard for me to rank them the way that I did, but bear with me, as a lot of these could be interchangeable anyways. Coming up next for one of the quote unquote worst arcs is the Akatsuki Suppression arc. I love this arc so much due to it not being hogged by Naruto and the other main characters. While Naruto had his moment to shine, we stuck around with side characters from Team Asuma like Shikamaru and they were used to great effect in the story. This is the first time a death in the show resonated with people as people have grown accustomed to Asuma so it became more impactful. As his death resulted in Shikamaru and his team to have the spotlight for once and Shikamaru having one of the best vengeance moments in fiction history. In a show where the side characters get derailed as the story went on, it was nice to see them being active one more time before it just became the Naruto and Sasuke show. That being said, I still like Naruto's training during this arc. While I feel like this part of the training should have been done during the time skip so that significant growth can be shown towards Naruto, I'm still pleased with how it turned out in this arc and was excited when he was able to pull off the Rasen Shuriken against Kakuzu even at 50%. Speaking of which, Kakuzu and Hidan were great overall inclusions in this arc as well as we see diversity within the Akatsuki and how they all have their own goals to tackle as well as they still carry out their mission to capture all the tail beasts. Amazing arc overall and definitely underrated. Now putting the lands of wave arc this slow on the list may tick some people off but realize that I already mentioned that these arcs going forward are already amazing and can be interchanged so cut me some slack. This was an amazing introduction for not only just the main characters but also a bunch of concepts being shown at us in general. The ninja aspect was already cool enough but coupled that with interesting characters like Akashi and Zabuza to show the full potential of what it means to be a ninja and we have a recipe for greatness. Speaking on Zabuza, he's a villain that I feel doesn't get talked about enough especially for being the first main antagonist of the show. He showed the darker side of being a ninja all the while using Haku as a tool in display of that. Bro was also the first villain to be talk no jutsu in the series so that has to be worth something. One of my favorite moments too is when Naruto assumes the power of the Nine Tails to full on wreck Haku. It shows the potential dangers the power of the Nine Tails can have on the ninja world. I also appreciate in general the character dynamics of the four main characters specifically with Naruto and Sasuke as while they may butt heads every once in a while they will be there for each other when it matters most. This was also the arc that helped Naruto form his own ninja way setting off how Naruto would go about being the Hokage he sets out to be. Overall really solid arc and I feel bad putting it this low but it's a testament to how great the remaining arcs are in the show. The Search for Tsunade arc is an arc I feel most people don't talk about for whatever reason even though it's the arc with many firsts for the show. The first showing of Itachi, the introduction of the Makiko Sharingan, introducing Tsunade, and the unveiling of Naruto's signature Jutsu comparable to the Kamehameha, that being the Rasengan. All inclusions being done to a T and truly stands out in comparison to the remainder of the show. Naruto's dynamic with Tsunade and their clashing ideals makes for the perfect chemistry between someone who's worthy of being a Hokage and someone who actually desires to be it. Speaking of which, Tsunade to me is an underrated character in a sense where in a world full of magical ninja, she is the most human out of all of the characters we've seen up to this point as her struggle between doing the right thing by becoming Okage or sacrificing her morals to resurrect her little brother and boyfriend with her most remote help. It was genuinely cool to see a character have that much struggle pit against her and it was executed well. And we can't forget about the training Naruto underwent with Jiraiya to learn the Rasengan, especially with how he found his own way in mastering the technique himself. And also the tension between Sasuke and Itachi was spectacular as we get an understanding as to why Sasuke is going after Itachi in the first place which will be fully realized with flashbacks in the Sasuke retrieval arc. Very underrated arc and I could totally see people putting this arc higher than I already have. I see no one talk about the 5 Kage summon as a whole which is a shame because I really like this arc. The only big knock I can give it is the whole Sakura confession but it doesn't take away from the greatness that this arc has to offer. First off, we finally get to see the other nations in the Naruto world since the lack of world building was a big issue for many people and each Kage has something going for them each with their own distinct personalities and beliefs. They all want the same thing in that they want the Akatsuki to be dealt with but Danzo who is the stand in Hokage at this point has shifty motives on how he wants to go about change which makes him untrustworthy as an ally and makes more sense as to why Sasuke is willing to kill him. Speaking of Sasuke, he is a complete savage in this arc. He went to a complete tonal change after learning the truth about Itachi and is wanting to seek revenge on the village for existing while Itachi had to perish. Danzo being the catalyst of that makes it easier to root for Sasuke in this case. And during their fight, we get to see Sasuke's Susano in action and this fight was one of the last few that showed high IQ feats at work. We also see that after the pain arc that Naruto's characters change as well as while he still doesn't know how to achieve true peace, he's pleading with others to stop the cycle of hatred. Him being turned on at every point, specifically with the Raikage, is a genuine reaction I expect from people who knew nothing but war and hatred all their lives. So Naruto is indeed going to have to step up to the challenge. And the foreshadowing at the end of the arc, letting us know that Naruto vs Sasuke is indeed going to happen, but with both of them dead, is symbolic to say the least. This arc does not get talked about enough and deserves to be this high on the list. Now we're getting into peak fiction territory, meaning if you wanted to substitute a placement for an arc with another one, I wouldn't look at you sideways. This is just how I view each arc going forward. And I view you about to hit the like button for 
this video, so you might as well go ahead and do that, as well as hit the subscribe button for more Naruto content just like this. You won't regret it. The Master's Prophecy Inventions arc is a bit confusing to put, not in terms of placement, but more so in my mind, these were just two separate arcs. Like I typically put the Jiraiya portion along with the Pain Assault and all the Itachi Pursuit and Faded Battle into one, but since the manga and anime track them as one arc, I'll do it the same just to be fair. Sasuke's defiance for Rochimaru was unexpected to many, and looking back, it's crazy to think about that the big bad the past few arcs was beaten by Sasuke near the halfway point in the overall story of Naruto. Granted, Orochimaru was bedridden, so it was easier for Sasuke to go about killing him, but still, impressive story-wise that he did this, since it gave the idea that Sasuke would be able to fight against Itachi. Then we actually get to the long way to fight, and it doesn't disappoint in the slightest. Sasuke finally got his revenge he was hoping for, all for it to be fabricated as Itachi planned this all along, and was actually a spy for the Leaf Village. This reveal was insane and catapulted Sasuke's character into complete madness, but low-key in a justified manner once you realize it was because of the Leaf Elder's doings. And amongst all this, we also have Jiraiya infiltrating the Rain Village to learn more about the leader of the Akatsuki, who ends up being one of Jiraiya's old students, long thought to be dead. Their fight led to one of the saddest deaths in Naruto and would fuel the main character into getting his get back on pain, which I'll talk about a little later. Little to nothing wrong in this arc and could easily be considered the best arc had it not been for the next three I'm about to mention. One thing the Sasuke Retrieval arc does well is keeping on the fence and the tension high. Like there wasn't a moment where you aren't on the edge of your seat given the opponents the leaf Genin had to face. Each fight against the Sound 4 led you thinking that each of the leaf ninja were bound to die, Kimimaru's fight against Rock Lee was very entertaining, the Sand Village Genin showing up was an event, and of course, what many consider to be the best fight in the entire series, Naruto vs Sasuke in the Final Valley. And speaking of Naruto vs Sasuke, it was an overall amazing payoff, since it hinges off the fact that Naruto is the one trying to catch up to Sasuke, while Sasuke feels like he is being limited in his pursuit of power against Itachi. And with the conclusion of the fight being something you typically wouldn't expect from a story, that being the antagonist, Sasuke in this case, proceeding to be taken in by Orochimaru, you're left wondering how the remainder of the series is going to turn out, leading into the Shippuden era of the series. Definitely a top 3 arc in my eyes. The Chunin exams being at number 2 is going to upset a lot of people, and I totally get why. While I do really, really love this arc, the main critique I can give this arc is that a lot of the fights in the exams, primarily in the preliminary rounds, weren't all that great. You had fights like Sokka vs Ino, Naruto vs Kiba, and Choji vs Dosu weighing it down. But that said, these fights aren't enough for me to rank the arc any lower than number 2, because for one, they are still an exuberant amount of fights that are highly remembered in the series. Naruto and Sasuke vs Gara at the end of the exams, Shikamaru vs Tamari during, and of course, Rock Lee vs Gaara being remembered as the best fight in the series not named Naruto vs Sasuke. You also have a bunch of standout moments that would impact the show going forward, like the introduction of Orochimaru and Jiraiya, Sasuke receiving the curse mark, and the death of the third Hokage. This is the arc that gets me wanting to rewatch the Naruto series again, with how exciting it is to go through it. And some people may argue I'm actually being biased in putting this in front of the Sasuke retrieval arc for that exact reason, but I could argue against it saying that there's just too many highlights in this arc for me not to put it above it. That said, if someone wanted to switch switch out the placement with the retrieval arc, I wouldn't be mad at that, but for now, I'll put the Chunin Exams arc at number 2. There was no doubt in my mind that I would put the Pain of Soul arc at number 1. This arc is the closest thing to being a full 10 on 10. Much as I love Jiraiya, I'm glad he died for the sake of what comes out of this arc. Naruto has proper motivation to become stronger to take out his sibling student Pain, obtaining Sage Mode in the process, which in my opinion, is the peak version of Naruto in terms of how he obtains a form and performs with it, not including the QB Cloak in earlier parts of the story. And the Pain fight in of itself is one of the best fights in the series. I believe I had it in my top 5 in my list of best Naruto fights. And what came out of it was something life changing for Naruto, as when he talked to Pain about his philosophy on how the world is run on hatred, it changed Naruto's perception on how to combat against this nature. And even by the end of the arc when he chats with Nagato, he still doesn't have a true answer to how he would go about finding peace. But that said, he said he'll go on because he was entrusted by his master to carry on that will. It was also crazy to see that Naruto went against the grain underlined in a bunch of these superhero stories and not forgive his enemy, as I feel that it was the most human moment I've seen from him, further illustrating that he still needs to find a way to achieve true peace and not trying to gas it up at the moment. This to me is where the Naruto series peaked and stands true to being ranked as the best arc in Naruto. I know we all won't have the exact same rankings of these arcs, so I'll pass the question off to you guys. How would you rank the arcs yourselves, or at least tell me what you think the top 5 best arcs are? I'd love to get y'all's input, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more rankings, click the card you see here which will take you to my video on ranking each and every Naruto villain from worst to best. I'm the Curly Hero Kage and I hope you all have an amazing and blessed day. Peace.